Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with, I would call him definitely an icon. Definitely an extremely, extremely skilled player. A gentleman who's been on the scene for a minute, several places around the world know him by his first name. And today we are incredibly enough to have him with us today and lucky at that. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rich Telford, how are you doing, sir? Wonderful. I thought you were talking about somebody else. I apologize. <laughs> I was like, they got some big wig coming in here. <laughs> Who's that he's talking about? Yeah, I was excited. I was excited. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm wonderful, thank you. Thanks okay. for having me. Living Legends 2016. CPX. CPX. Uh, we've been here a few times. It's the, one of the biggest and best events I look forward to every year. And uh, when uh, we decided to have you on, I was very happy to do that because this is a man you don't get to see as much as we would not playing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm definitely working more than I'm playing now. Well, it's part of the thing that yeah, we do. Yeah. You know I, what I, I mean? I finally hit puberty and <laughs> I, I got to be responsible and start making money and stuff. Kicked in kind of late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a late bloomer. There you go. Um, wanted to talk about you today and uh, talk about you in the sport and you in life and maybe we can have some fun for a few minutes. Sounds good to me. Where did a young, is it Richard? Technically, it's Richard, or you can call me Dick. Richard Telford, grow up. Uh, Modesto, California. Okay. Yeah. Another SoCal dude. NorCal. NorCal. Um, born forgive in so me. Born in SoCal. Okay. But we moved up north when I was in third grade. Oh, life has been there ever since. Okay. And uh, where was that specifically? Is there just in that area? Type Modesto. Of thing? Modesto. Yeah. It's uh, okay. north, north, like Central Valley. Okay. Northern, Northern California. It's about an hour east of San Francisco and an hour and a half south of Sacramento. Parents. I do have parents. Names. A lot of people think I was born in a test. <laughs> uh, Lynn and Dave. Okay. Yeah. And uh, siblings? Three. Two brothers, one sister. Their names? Eric, Melissa, and Scott. Mom and dad are? Lynn and Dave. Lynn and Dave again. And uh, how do they feel about this paintball stuff that you're into? Uh, they don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, it's not their thing. Okay. But uh, they support me whatever I do, so yeah. Okay. When I first started doing it, they, you know, didn't think I would last or whatever. And then <laughs> 10 or 15 years later, I was like, you guys want to come to a tournament? Just check it out. Because they'd never even seen it before. And okay. so they came down to Huntington Beach and oh, had a nice. good time. And yeah, it was nice. Okay. How do, and what did they think after that? Uh, they, they think I'm an idiot running around <laughs> shooting my friends. But I'm okay with that. I think a lot of us can relate to that yeah. frame of mind. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people, if, the thing I always say is that if you're not in this sport, it's very hard to comprehend yeah. what well, we do. Yeah, well, probably anything, though, right? Like, yeah. I don't know anything about field hockey, and if I tried to jump into field hockey or something like that, it would be foreign to me. Yes. But doing things like this, this show, and doing events like this helps it get out to the real world, and that's good. School, high school, where'd yep. you go? Davis High School. Any teams? Any... Did you go on, like, a played football? football? Yeah, okay. played football. Undefeated How was freshman. That? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. What I, position? Uh, I was tall and slow, so they kind of moved me around. I started at uh, defensive end, then I went to outside linebacker, finished up as the safety. Nice. Nice. Varsity? Nope. Two years now. Okay. And uh, how did you venture into this weird sport we call paintball? I was uh, teaching martial arts at the time. What and, kind? Uh, hard style karate. Shudokan. Nice. Yeah. And I've been doing that for a long time. Uh, one of my students just kept coming in over and over and over again, like, oh, let me take you out and shoot you, let me take you out and shoot you. And that really felt like, sounded like fun getting shot, so I just put them <laughs> off. But then we took a big group of us from the karate school and went and played for our first time, rented a SL-68-2, a little pumper, and just played all day and had a blast. Nice. That's, that's, that's how it works, right? Yeah, and honestly, I, was, I probably would have never played again. I had a, a lot of fun, but I was competing every weekend, so I didn't really have a time. My buddy, uh, Paul Mendoza, went with me at the same time and he was just hooked and we were we were both hooked you know we'd be teaching karate and we'd be talking about paintball the whole time yeah 
Then we went to the local paintball shop because he wanted to get a gun. We go down there and those like the guy at the counter's like, oh, I heard about you guys. You guys shot everybody last week and everybody's gunning for you. No. So I was like, okay, good. Let's just not, <laughs> let's not play again, right? Like yeah. if everyone's gunning for us, I was like, oh, that's it. Yeah. We're buying guns. We're going to go out and get, shoot all these guys. So yeah. we, we bought a couple of Tipman Pro-Ams. Okay. Went out there and just started playing paintball. Beauty. Yeah. And you got hooked ever since? Yeah, I played, I played about six or seven times and then a team called Black Sunday asked me to play with them. And I wasn't really interested, and but they were like, "We'll give you paint for super cheap." Oh, like, oh well, that's yeah, interesting. Well, yeah. So I did that, and then our first practice was against a team called the Ironmen, and uh, I couldn't comprehend how somebody could be so much better at me than. <laughs> and that's what hooked me. You know? Okay. Like two that minute, challenge, two right? Two minutes into me, I look back, and there's three of them running me, running down on me. I was like, "Wow, these guys are really good." Yeah. I'm like, I I want to be really good. Yeah. So from that moment forward, I, at first I wanted to be the best player in the world, but then I kind of learned that you know you, you want to be the best player on the best team that you can be. Nice, I like that. Yeah, it's very interesting. And um, how did that work into your personal life? I mean, I don't know about kids and stuff, but how kids has kids that came been later. The, the personal life takes a hit, yeah. and anybody that's doing anything, if you want to be the best in the world at it, it's not really. Some of it's how strong, how fast, and how smart you are, but a lot of it comes down to how much you want to sacrifice. Do you have kids? I have two children. Who are they? Uh, Grace Telford and Shelby Telford. How old are they? Grace is 14, starting high school next year. Wow. Shelby's seven, turning eight in a couple months. Whatever my kids want to do, I'm going to support a thousand percent, as okay. long as they're putting their time and energy into it, and as long as they're passionate about it. Yeah. I told my daughter, I was like, I don't care if you don't play paintball, I don't care if you do whatever you want to do, just be find one thing you enjoy and just be passionate about it, be okay. the best. And. Uh, how do they feel about uh, dad taking off so much for this sport called paintball? I think they're okay. I mean, they grew up with it, so it's not like... Nothing new. Yeah, it's not like they have something else, else to judge it against, so they're okay. And when I'm home, I'm 100% kids. I pick them up from school, take them to cheer, take them to jiu-jitsu, just, you know, spend all the time I can with them. And then when I'm working, I'm working. Okay. Are you married? I am. Her name? Lucretia Telford. Lucretia Telford. Lucretia. How does she handle your career? Uh, she's great. Yeah. Best, best, I couldn't imagine for more. She's a professional photographer. I met her shooting at an event. Oh, really? So okay. She, she knows the game. Yeah, she's okay. worked for Eclipse and for a couple other companies doing photos. Okay. So, yeah, she knows the game. She knows the deal. She's, she couldn't be more supportive. Drives oh. me to the airport. It's not easy up. to find. No, it's, it's not. And uh, I'm very, very fortunate. And I think I, I'm thankful and grateful for that on a very regular basis. Amazing. How long to be together? We got married last year. Oh, really? We've been together for five years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, How was that expensive party? That wasn't bad. I, I did okay. a, everybody voted against me, but I did a sneak wedding. So we were, oh. we were going down to Mexico to hang out with my parents for a week. Okay. My mom got ordained. Yes. We got there. Your mother. My mom got ordained. <laughs> we, we got there and I was like, hey, babe, do you want to get married? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'd like to get married to you. I'm like, great. How do you feel about tomorrow? <laughs> Are so, you serious? Yeah, we, we went out this morning. I went out with the guys, and I got uh, you know a suit made, and yep. she got a dress made. And the next day we got married, and it was beautiful. Outstanding. No, no, no stress, no hassle, no fuss. Just that is really, really good. One of her friends flew in. Her best friend flew in, so she was there. So it was, it was really nice. Mother got ordained. Yep. Last minute, go out and get married. And every every single person I talked to, you know, because you feel people out, right? Yes, sir. Like, doing something's kind of crazy. Everyone, don't do it. She'll kill you. I got so got so far down the line that I was like, maybe I shouldn't do this. And I was like, <laughs> I was like you know what? I'm going to do it. She can say no. Okay. We still have a nice week in Mexico. Yes, sir. But uh, fortunately, she said yes, and uh, we had a wonderful year in Mexico, and we went back again last year, and we're going to go every year to celebrate our anniversary. That's amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. I, all, anybody that's getting married out there, skip all the stress. Yes. Skip all the money. Just you, your old lady, a couple close friends. Call Matt Marshall, yeah, have him do the ceremony, knock I'll, it out. <laughs> That's funny. But a lot of people are not as understanding of your other half, yeah, your, but that, your better half. Yeah. Like, that's not easy to get away with. Yeah. You know what but I mean? that's all ego, right? I mean, you can a spend $25,000 on a wedding, you can put $25,000 on a house. Definitely. And one goes a lot farther than the other. And that is what I find a very European frame of mind. The spending fifty, a hundred thousand dollars on a wedding only seems to be a North American thing. Yeah. Like when you go to Europe and we go to the islands and they stuff seem like to that. be smarter than us. In a lot of ways. Like for every, some every time they do something cool in the millennium, two or three years later, we're then like, it transfers you know over. They've been doing it for two or three years. It seems like it's worked pretty good. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do it now. Yeah, well, we got a lot of Freddy cats over here. We do. A lot of status quo. And that is one reason why I appreciate you and what you do because there's not many 
visionaries such as yourself in this sport. And few, I've seen a lot of guys leave, and Lord forbid you ever do, but I'm, I'm a lifer. You, you, you've uh, pulled off some very cool things in your I've been very, career. very fortunate, yeah. And uh, not a lot of guys can say that. So, uh, you know, we all appreciate what you do. What is something that you're proud of that you've done in this sport? Um, uh, the Splatmaster program, I'm yeah. pretty proud of that. We got uh, a lot of kids out there playing paintball with that. Amazing that program. Me, makes me feel really good. Oh. We just, we did an event and it's... It just reminded me about that, yeah. It's been kind of slowed down because of the acquisition of GI Empire. Yes. So right before the, the buyout, we did an event down at Sean Walker's Field in Camp Pendleton. Yes. And uh, it was a free event. We had 75 teams sign up, kids that oh, never wow. played paintball before. Nice. And the difference between working with kids that weren't involved with paintball and instead of working with paintball kids, paintball parents with kids, yes, unbelievable. I could imagine. When I, when I told them they got a free t-shirt, ecstatic. When I told them they got a medal and a trophy, they, they <laughs> didn't believe that's me. That's a whole new world. And, yes, and the only challenge I had is, you know, with 75 teams, that's three to five kids per team. Every kid's got a parent. I had 6,000 phone calls because they wouldn't believe it was free. And they're like, right, I know it's free, but what do we have to pay for? <laughs> I'm like, it's all taken care of. You know, like Splatmaster's handling this, Sean Walker's handling this. You just show up, bring the kid. In fact, you want to just drop them off, we'll take care of them all day. Okay, but what do we have to pay for? What's the bottom? When we get yeah. there, what's, what's the bottom line? <laughs> yeah, and exactly. I was like, if you get there and there's any expenses, I will take I will pay for those expenses for you. That's Don't how you even do it. worry about it. That's how and, you do uh, it. And it ended up pouring rain, never happens in San Diego. And we still got 43 teams out there. Wow. And the kids were ecstatic and the, the kids and the parents stayed all day in the pouring rain and just loved it. Amazing. So that was very, very rewarding. Um, so uh, I got to tell you that one of the greater, I, w I wouldn't say invention, but one of the greater pr things is these damn splat masters yeah those things are amazing yep. um john robinson i was sent a couple to my house i was one of the first guys to have them in canada had on my channel and till this day my kids like to run around and shoot them with nothing in it yeah just because it feels yeah, fun it just feels to fun. do it shooting guns is fun yeah, yeah my, my, uh, <laughs> my oldest daughter when she was in second grade or third grade she brought her whole class out 22 kids oh nice and they all played splat master and they just had a blast and you know she was the cool kid because she brought everyone out to play yes. paintball and, and you're the even cooler dad yeah it was it was really good it's and again good really right rewarding there. for me yeah to yeah. see a bunch of kids having fun and, and enjoying the sport that we all love and yeah it, it, the sports changed a lot um and we have to change with it right like when we started, it was just all a bunch of bush guys out there and bikers and hardcore yeah. guys. And yeah. it's not like that anymore. It's, it's kids now. And, we, and as an industry, we have to realize that and kind of change our perspective a little bit. You've uh, been around long enough, and not to make you sound like an old man. Oh, I but am old. To uh, see the change of paintball over the years, going from the woods, coming out of the woods into the hyperball fields, into the speedball fields. What do you think of it? Do you like it? I like paintball. And I've played, in, as far as I know, I've played every format there is. And as long as you got good guys, you're going to have a good time. Absolutely. And whether you're playing in the woods, there's a skill set for playing in the woods. There's a skill set for playing hyperball. There's a skill set for, for airball. And it's, it's, it's you know, 70% of the skill set's the same. There's different things that you do and different things, but exactly. it's paintball, man. So find out which one you like, whether you like magfed or the woods or speedball or some other new form, and just do it and enjoy it. I, I get a little bit peeved because there's like the tension between the scenario guys and the tournament guys. Silly. And it's ridiculous. Nonsense. We're all yeah. paintball players. It's very petty. Yeah, and it's it's not. Any, the, one of the nice things about paintball is any. Or no offense to you. Any can pick up a gun and shoot the best guy in the world. I mean, Absolutely. you can't go it's, do it every single time, it's but the you can do it. Ultimate equalizer. Yeah, it, it, you give you give a tipman. He goes out there, runs around, shoots a couple guys. I'll jump in, I'll get randomly shot by some little kid who has no idea, like, he's excited, and I'm just like, wow, that was, that was awesome, you know? And exactly. He's having a good time, and, and that's what it's all about, having fun, bringing the family in, and, and keep growing our sport. Of all the markers that you've used throughout your career, or that you have your on your collection on your wall, what is uh, one of your favorites? I just had this discussion yesterday with Travis Lemansky, okay. uh, the old Matrix, the first original oh, Matrix. Oh, wow, we, okay. We were the ones that brought it down from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing for Image at the time for Euros and Ironman for Cal in, in the States. Okay. And I, they gave me one of the guns and I shot it and I, I was just blown away with how good it shot. And <laughs> yeah. I just, I couldn't imagine. So I, I played with it, I played with it, I played with it and I was like, yeah, this is the gun. Yeah. 
So I, I called Richmond and I was like, I want, I want to help you sell these guns, but they're hideous. You know, they're really ugly <laughs> and they're really heavy. And I'm like, so I'm having a hard, it's all about the aesthetics. Yeah, so I'm, having, so I'm having a hard time getting my guys to sell it. Yeah. So then I came up with kind of a marketing strategy where the guys could buy one matrix per event. Yep. At a cost. Yes. And then they could sell it and make four, five, six hundred bucks. Yes. And immediately that makes that gun their favorite gun in the whole world. Pretty much. And you know, we just bought in and just had a blast. I think we ran with them for two, three years and just oh, shoot wow. amazing. Just have you, shoot amazing. Do you still, have you shot it recently? Uh, I haven't shot a Matrix in probably a couple years. Someone had one at the field. Okay. But uh, Travis Lemansky just bought one from Sloviak and I just kind of went through it for him yesterday. <laughs> just the actual shot characteristic of the gun is amazing. Oh, really? Eh? Amazing. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I've Di, heard many good when, things about those. Yeah, when Dai brought the gun over, they went more for the aesthetics and kind of got away from the, you have to have a big volume of air to make it shoot that good. Yeah. Kind of got away from that, which, you know, I get. It's obviously a lot better looking gun, but man, if they could have kept that same shot characteristic and, yes, then, and then got everything else to work around that, yep. by far be the best. I mean, the Lux is the closest gun now to that. Okay. And it's, it, it was better than the Lux. Many don't know that uh, you're a published writer. You actually, actually am, yeah. came out with a book, uh, I believe it was called Paintballer. Mm -hmm. Um, which is amazing within itself. How was that process and would you do it again? I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I love that book. I'm a little embarrassed because I'm not a, a grammatically good writer. I just write kind of flow. And uh, the deal I made with the guy was I didn't charge him to do the book. I said, I'll do it for free, but I want it edited by Sam, who was my editor at, from Facebook at the time. Oh, okay. Because I want, you know, I don't want to look like a moron. <laughs> yeah. And it just fell through and never got edited. So the whole book is oh. just typos. My, my name is misspelled in the book. <laughs> and I, 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 I would probably wouldn't have done it, but the guy who did the book, Romaine, is uh, one of the best guys in paintball. One okay. of the best photographers I've ever worked with. Yeah. So, and it started off where I thought I would just, you know, couple paragraphs for yeah. him, like intro and something like that, and, and just from there went into the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. My mom do you have a copy anywhere? I do not. I, actually, I think I have one copy. I think somebody gave me a copy last Sir. year. Oh, yeah, you need to I hold think. on to that. What's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, like, I guess give all my stuff away. I, <laughs> I know what you I'm mean. I'm not a hoarder. Like, it, yeah. I figure the kids at the paintball field probably need it more than I do. I like that. So yeah, I got, a, I got a Heroes with a Day the other day, and uh, I think I have a paintballer, and I'm going to keep those two copies and just keep them. Okay. My mom's a writer. She's written a few books. Okay. That's very cool. She's much better than I am. What style? Uh, holistic. holistic. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Have you lived that lifestyle yourself? I, I use some of the principles, some okay. concepts, like uh, affirmations and things like that, okay. meditation and stuff like that, but yes, I'm, sir. Not, uh, I'm not too, you know. Well, we're... we're uh, we're both martial artists, so. What do you do? Meditation. I did uh, Shaolin Gong Fu. Oh, good. For cinema. I also nice. did a bit of Shotokan Karate. Nice. And uh, some uh, Muay Thai. Nice. So, That's but good, good Kung Fu was. Kung Fu's great. A lot of uh, what I did. So, you know, studied the theories of Zen. Nice. And did a lot of meditation work and helps, spiritual man. stuff. Yeah, it helps get you calm. It you gets you through the, life, period. Yeah, you can get the inside calm, everything else works out. Exactly. A lot of people, and the thing nowadays about that, especially having kids now and taking them to a martial arts school is that it's hard to find a good sensei or sifu have to, yeah. who knows how to do that. And I find that a lot of the present day schools, the dojos are like, okay, you bring your kids here, we'll get them a black belt in the year. Yeah. I would highly recommend, so I got my first black belt in Shudokan, second degree in Shudokan. I got a Tama black belt. I went to Japan, got one in Kenshikan. Wow. So I've done a lot of martial arts training, wow. training in Korea. I, would, I recommend to everybody, put your kid in jujitsu. Just put him in jujitsu. Really? It's, okay. It's six months of jujitsu training, maybe a year if it's a kid. Yeah. You're a competent martial artist and you can defend yourself if you need to. Interesting. They're good with the discipline and the respect. Yeah. Injuries are super low because you're not striking. Yes. And there's not the, the fear of, you know, for some reason kids are afraid to spar sometimes. Okay. But rest, they're never afraid to wrestle. You That's know? very true. And my youngest daughter's into it and she just loves it. And she's doing a great job and, and it, I, the kids are just, I, I just tell everybody, like, I, I'm a huge fan of martial arts. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a martial artist and you want to do them all, you know, pick, pick Muay Thai, pick all your little ones and kind of put them all together. But if you're just going to do one, and if you're just looking for the best overall experience for your child, you know, respect, discipline, health, self-defense, Jiu-Jitsu is by far the way to go. Very cool. I like that. Um, I've never been to Jiu-Jitsu. Well, Jiu-Jitsu have appreciated Aikido also yeah. as a very formidable. Yeah. But again, the level of... Uh, 
respect you have to have for it. It has to be up here to yeah. be able to get through it, right? And yep. And the problem with uh, something like Aikido is uh, beautiful art. Yeah. But you could study Aikido for 20 years. Yes. And not really master it to a point where you can defend yourself or, or teach other people. Yes. Because the whole, you know, the space concept. It's the same as Kung Fu. Yeah, of yeah. course. Any striking art. Yeah. But with Jiu Jitsu, you know, your hands are on and it's they just pick it up so fast. And yes. It's just natural. And you just teach them. You know, you do this, you don't do this. If this happens, you don't do it. It's very practical, very practical. It's pragmatic. a lot easier to teach a hold so as opposed much. to a full kata. So much. And it, uh, as an adult or even a child, if you get to a blue belt level, like in regular martial arts, that really doesn't mean anything. In jiu-jitsu, that means you're competent. You know, yes, you, sir. You, there, if you, if you, unfortunately, you have to defend yourself, and there's someone that's you know bigger than you and it's only one person, you, confidently you can defend yourself against that person. Outstanding. Uh, try to finish up with you a bit here. Okay. And uh, what I like to do is... Uh, Get a few theoretical, quick answered questions out to you. Stuff that just shotgun them. Shotgun boom, them. Boom, 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 boom. Straight thing that comes man. to your head. Okay. You know how it works. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite tangible object in the world? Uh, my family. Does okay. that count for tangible object? Somewhat. I'm thinking I, more of like a thing. I'm not a thing guy. I'm okay. a family guy. That's a good thing. Like, That's a good thing. I abuse my things. <laughs> I can't focus right now. I'm sorry, did Panda just walk yeah, in? Yeah, Panda was oh showing his sexy God. body. He's got like an eight pack right now. Oh, uh, SoCal kids. Uh, uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do have a couple rifles and pistols that I like a lot too. Oh yeah, what do you shoot? Uh, everything. Okay. What uh, rifle format? Are you an AR guy or AR, AK guy? AR guy. I got both. Okay. okay. But uh, I'm an AR guy, I, so I know yeah. you're sometimes one or the yeah, other. Yeah. I like ARs. I like AKs. I, uh, I think a piston-driven AR is probably the, the combination of the two that works the best. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, that's a whole different show I want to do one day. Let me know. I, it's my hobby. Oh, beautiful, sir. What is your favorite thing you like to hear a person say? That's a, that's a good one. Uh, I like to say, I like to hear people say thank you. Like I think a lot of uh, what we get, we take for granted, especially in the industry. And uh, when, when you do something for somebody and they actually take the time to be like, hey, thank you, I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. Not even to me, but to somebody else. In general. So many people just kind of take it for granted like, yeah. and uh, take advantage. And obviously if we're not all helping out and we're not pushing the same direction, we're not gonna get very far. Absolutely. What is your least favorite thing to hear a person say? Uh, I wouldn't say there's a least favorite thing. I, like. I, I hate excuses. I do a lot of clinics and I, I, and I work with people on, on paintball. And one of the things I try to teach them is that, you know, if you're not taking responsibility for what you're doing out there, you're never going to get better. And you, you know how it is. Everyone's got an excuse on why they got shot. Yeah. And, you know, this, that, and I, I, it doesn't matter why you got shot. You got shot. <laughs> exactly. So figure out how you got shot and fix it. And if you don't own what you, how you got shot, you're never going to fix it. You're not going to get better. Is that end result, sir? Yep. What is something you hear that is absolute music to your ears? Uh, well, Metallica, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, uh, so I have a small paintball field and we have a, a birthday area. Okay. And when those kids come in after their first game and you hear them talking about their little war stories and about how this guy shot that guy and this guy did this, I, I love that stuff. I just eat yes, up. Yes, sir. You can see them smiling through the mask and just, you just yeah. feel that <laughs> You can feel that. Energy. Yes, sir. It just, it feels that glow is amazing. Yeah, and they're not, they're not like us where they've been through it for so long where they got, they're jaded at all. They're just yeah. open eyed and having a blast and yes. really enjoying it. It's a I beautiful love, thing. It makes me feel good. Outstanding. What... Was your worst job you've ever had? Uh, I laid sod in Minnesota one summer. Wow. And a roll of sod weighs about 40 pounds. Yeah. But in Minnesota, it rains all summer. Oh. So when you're laying sod, it rains about 70 pounds. Goodness gracious. And the crew guy we were working with was a real hard ass. And yeah. You couldn't put your knee down, so you had to bend over to put it down. If you put your oh. knee down, you thought it was, so, it was too long. <laughs> by the time it took him to get a pallet off the truck and drop, yeah. you and three other guys had to have that pallet cleared off. So. I mean, we were humping. Wow. At the end of the day, you were just dead. So I, I'm not a big fan of that. That's, yeah, that's an... I that's, like working hard, but there's there's a line. There's a line, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's just stupid. That's like destroy your back yeah. after a certain amount of years type of work. My goodness. Um, what was something you've gained in your life because of paintball? Um, I've gained some of arguably the coolest people in the world are my family. Like... Guys like Nikki Cuba, Matt Marshall, Oliver Lang, just guys that... Yeah. All very legit gentlemen. Yeah, they're just, 
it, it, no matter what those guys do, you know, they could do tiddly wings, parachute, whatever they do, those yes. guys are going to be the best in the world at it. Yeah. And, and they're and they're going to be good guys too. You know? Absolutely. They're not going to think they're special because they play paintball, or you know, they yeah. may be traded special because they shot somebody. And uh, it means a lot to me that I have those. And some of those guys I don't see for years, and then I see them, and it's just you know, just like we never miss. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, yeah. So I've made some of the best friends and slash family. Outstanding. Yeah, I got to get Nikki in that chair soon. Very interesting gentleman. Yeah, he's great. What was he's, something? He's got knee surgery. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, that's. I've been close a, to that. Kind of a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope he hears this interview. <laughs> he will. <laughs> I was just telling him last week. He's like, "Oh, my knee's killing me." I'm like, "Well, try not being a baby. Yes, See sir. if that helps." <laughs> Gotta love people for that, don't you? Yeah. Tough love is the only well, kind of love. When I injured my knee, it's funny because we play with so many hardcore players and we play with like a lot of military vets yeah. and ex-athletes that if you complain about something you injured like a knee, you'll hear every horror story out of the book from yeah. guys who got really hurt in something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. no sympathy. No sympathy. That's what is, weakness. What it is. What is something in your life that you feel that you have lost or sacrificed because of paintball? Uh, definitely family time. I mean, you have to make those sacrifices if you want to be the best at something, but, uh, and my family's been really good about scheduling everything around my schedule, but like I said, that year when we were on the road for 20 events, 25 events, like I missed a year basically of m my whole family. Wow. Yeah, and, and it was, uh, it's that rock star the life the without the, the millions, right? Moving, yeah. At that time you're moving so fast, you don't really think about it. Now looking back, I'm like, man, I, you know, I, I accomplished my goals, but I, you know, what short, did I? Yeah, I took a shortcoming on my family, and that's just not cool. And uh, where do you see Rich in 10 years from now? Hopefully, sitting right here talking to you. Yes, sir. Maybe a little taller, maybe a little fitter. Less gray. A little bit less gray. <laughs> I hear that story. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, and uh, anything uh, coming out for you or your companies or anyone you'd like to shout out? Me, personally, I'm doing my first big game next weekend. Oh, at, really? Uh, West Coast Adventure Park in Sacramento. Outstanding. Um, uh, the guy who owns the field is the captain of the team I coach, the okay. Sacramento Sharks. Mm -hmm. They're competing in the uh, MPP, I mean, sorry, the NXL and all the local events. Great group of kids. So okay. check out their Facebook page, West Coast Sharks. Uh, check out the big game, NorCal SoCal and uh, come by Empire and GI and we'll take care of you with whatever you need. Outstanding. We'll, we'll sell you guns, we'll fix your guns, whatever you guys need. Thank you, a pleasure and an honor, brother. Always it, brother. a pleasure. And uh, yes, this has been a wonderful episode with this man right here, outstanding. If you ever see him an event, go up and talk to him. He yeah, can, come say hi. He can learn you some stuff. Yeah, Thank you. I don't know about that, but I can say hi. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the, the Inside the Paintball Studio. This is Rich Telford, I am Wolf. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. To that? technically be inside the studio, don't we have to have a fern suit right there? I was thinking about that. <laughs>